Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Medine, you talked a little bit earlier in response to some questions about uh, limited Fourth Amendment protections for information held by third parties. I think a lot of that is what uh, Section 215 kind of uh, bootstraps on. It gives the government broad authority to, uh, to, to get a hold of that information. So uh, just so the folks watching this and everybody understands, there's a difference between, like, if I have a file on my computer or if I have a file on something on a cloud storage. Uh, I have more privacy, correct, in, in, in what's on my computer, more protection. Under current Supreme Court law, that's right. And the, the same would be true for something sent by postal mail. I would have a more privacy than something sent by email. Uh, that's kind of more traditional. And I, I, I would assume that, uh, you know, a, a cancel check that I have in my drawer is, uh, is more protected than the, the bank record. Is that something you think most Americans understand the difference in this day and age about information that they is held electronically or held by third parties? Do you think most Americans understand that it's basically fair game? Um, I suspect that they don't, but I think the key thing here is that, as you say, technology has changed dramatically since the Supreme Court's decision in Smith v. Maryland, which is collecting a limited amount of information from one person over a short period of time, as opposed right. to our, our... Our ability to gather information has changed. Now, so the, the courts could revisit this, but is it also not appropriate that Congress could revisit this and say you actually do have a reasonable expectation of privacy in certain things? Um, that's exactly what the majority of our board has recommended, is that based on our legal analysis of Section 215, our constitutional analysis, which we say is heading in the direction of adding protections, and also our balancing national security with privacy and civil liberties, we saw a great impact on uh, this okay. program on chilling... So let me, let me just ask Mr. Cole, and I, I, I suspect I know the answer to this question. So if any of my information is held by a third party, uh, do you see any substantial limitation on what Section 215 allows you guys to get? Yes, I see very significant limitations on what we could get being held by a third party. All right, well, let, let's just talk about some things that are probably held uh, in bulk. Uh, we, we, we talked a lot about the metadata on telephone calls. Could geolocation uh, data that is routinely reported back from uh, cell phones be gathered? Uh, if there's a, a need, it, it may or it may not. Bank records, uh, credit card transactions, things like that? They may not be. It depends on whether there would be a need to show the connections where you'd need the whole group. Right, but under the, under the rationale that you get all telephone records, couldn't that be extended to say, all right, we need all credit card transaction records or all geolocation data so we can go back and mine it after the fact for what we hear from uh, the folks to your left uh, is a very limitedly effective program. Well, we're not mining the data, Congressman. That's not something... Or, or, or go back and searching it, I guess. Well, we're and we're searching it only in a very limited way. <laughs> right, only but the same argument that says you can collect all the phone data, couldn't the exact same argument be used for any other sorts of data that are collected by businesses in bulk? Not necessarily, because the phone data connects two different people and you have to look at those two different sets. Right, so the geolocation data does the same thing. I go... Not necessarily because it, it only focuses on one person. Right, but you could... And not if, if you got the geolocation data, you could get everybody who's within 150 feet of me by rather than searching the, uh, uh, the, the person's phone, you could search the lat lawn of where they are and you could tell everybody who's in this room right now. But there may be other ways to go about that without collecting all of the data for every single cell tower in the United States. Okay, but, but do you believe that it would be legal for you all to do that? Only if there was a need. The, the court's rulings have really focused on the fact that there's a need under the facts and circumstances. Okay. All right, well, I, I see I'm almost out of time, and I wanted to follow up on something that came up in the Oversight and Government Reform Committee last week. Can you tell us whether the NSA uh, is playing any role in identifying, assessing, or classifying information about security threats or vulnerabilities associated with the healthcare.gov website. Are you aware of anything? Uh, I'm not aware of anything, your, uh, Congressman, but that's nothing that I'm aware of. Thank you very much. I yield back.